ಓಂ ಮಂಗಳಂ ಗುರುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಿಯ ಮತ್ರಿಕ್ಷ ಮಂಗಳ ಮಂಗಳಂ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದೇವಿಯೋ ಸರ್ವಲೋಕಾಯ ಮಂಗಳಂ ಓಂ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚ ಧರ್ಮಸ ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣ ಅವತಾರ ವರಿಷ್ಠಾಯ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಮಂಗಳಂ ಓಂ ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರು ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುದೇವ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುದೇವ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭಂ ಶಂಕರಚಾರ ಅಜಮಂ ಅಶ್ಮರಾಚಾರ ಪ್ರಾಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂ ಪರಂ ಓಂ ಭದ್ರಕಾಲ ನಮೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ವೇರವೇರಂಗ ವೇರಂತ ವಿಜಸ್ಥಾನ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರಡ ಗುರು ಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓ ಜಯ ಮಾ ಜಯ ಮಾ So after a couple of weeks uh, break, as we recovered, we both prepared and recovered from our Kali Mandir 30th anniversary celebration last Sunday, which was very wonderful and very and, and, uh, uh, ecstatic and fulfilling and exhausting in every possible way. So we're, uh, so we're recovering from that, recovered from that. So we, we took one week off to, during our preparation, and the last week we took off just as we could get our health and energy and living space back to normal. Um, so very happy, I'm, I'm sad to have missed two weeks in a row of this class, but I'm happy to start again. So we're continuing our discussion of the um, Devi Gita, of the Shrimad Devi Bhagavatam, um, uh, an important Shakta text. And the Devi Gita is, uh, is a wonderful um, uh, text on Vedanta and Tantra, and Shakta philosophy. It's a great a particular stage of development in the, in the Sanskrit tradition of the Shakta, of the Shakta philosophical um, presentation. So it's one of my, one of our favorite texts. I mean, there's, in a certain sense, there's not many texts for us. There are, I mean, we have the Chandi, the Devi Mahatmyam, we have, and we have the Devi Bhagavatam. These are like the main, the two, our go-to um scriptures where we find philosophy and leela and descriptions of the goddesses and the battles between gods and demons and you know um and full of our of our um kind of shakta goddess oriented philosophy and practice and mythology comes from these texts so they're important so right now in this in what's happening in our text is uh, the gods have went into seclusion after the, the, the awakening of a great demon. The gods perform tremendous uh, austerities to get a vision of the goddess, the supreme goddess, here in this text known as Bhuvaneshwari. This is a Bhuvaneshwari-centric text, um, a Bhuvaneshwari uh, Purana, you would say. Like you have Kali Purana, Vishnu Purana, Shiva Purana. This is a Bhuvaneshwari Purana. The, prime, the supreme goddess of the of, of the Carian tradition of goddess worship of Um, um So she appears first as a pillar of light, showing her anaconic form uh, of pure consciousness. And then she takes on the form of a god, takes on her form or reveals her form of the goddess Bhuvaneshwari, her iconographic form, right? And then the gods, and she offers a boon to the gods. They ask that she'd be born in order to have a son, that will kill the demon that's causing their suffering. She promises to be born as Uma, as um, uh, 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 as uh, Parvati, the daughter of the Himalayas, and then grants them a further boon of lifelong devotion. So then they ask more, uh, slightly more philosophical questions: of what's the path that leads to her, the continuous realization of her, and especially one of the one of the key, and this is what this section is dealing with reveal to us that the essence of the Vedanta, the essence of the Upanishads, Sarva Anta Vedanta, I think is the term that was used, the essence of the Upanishads, the, the conclusion of the conclusion of the Vedas. So what is the essence of the of the Upanishads? Right. And then she makes these beautiful, these great grand statements. Um, um, maybe we'll, we'll, we're, only, we're only a few verses into chapter two, so I may reread the six verses, preceding verses. But basically saying that Brahman, the supreme, the, the source of everything, I am that Brahman. And so that's a big Shakta statement. The Brahman of the Upanishads, the foundational consciousness, the foundational reality, reality itself, existence itself, that's her. That's a she. That's the goddess. So the goddess is identifying, is, is claiming, I am that Brahman. Right, and then the the uh, further question is, okay, if you are, if she is that Brahman, what is all this, and how is all this? What is 
all this meanings, actually the classical terms is Jeev Jagat. Where do we come from? Where does this universe come from? Right? Why is there, why, how, not, why and how and where from is this universe? Jeev Jagat, the, multi, the seemingly at least, actually or seeming multi, uh, uh, diverse, variegated, multiple universe, the world of of multiplicity. I want to say the world of duality, but duality is not the right word. It's not just two things here, the world of multiplicity, the world of many. So let's look at the verses so far and to get us up to speed a little bit here. I'm going to share screen here. You can see that. Somebody wave at me that you can see that. I get very, okay, thank you. I get very nervous with the things. May all the gods of Devi Uvacha Devi Chu, the goddess spoke, speaks, the goddess said, May all the gods attend to what I have to say. By merely hearing these words of mine, one attains my essential nature. I alone existed in the beginning. There is nothing else at all, O mountain king. This is her statement that I am Brahman. Right? My true self is known as pure consciousness, um, uh, uh, as, as uh, chit consciousness. Samvit, highest intelligence, another word for consciousness, and the one supreme Brahman, Brahmaika, Brahma, Brahmaika, Anamakam. I am known as that one supreme Brahman, the supreme reality. I am Brahman, I am consciousness. So she's like the goddess is identifying, right, with consciousness itself. And this is important because in kind of what we sometimes understand as Tantra, a lot of what we consider in our kind of school of Tantra, we think of Tantra, when we use the word, when the, our community uses the word Tantra, we often mean Shaivite Tantra, a monistic Shaivite Tantra is often what we mean. This could be because of the popularity and the success, philosophical success of the Kashmiri Tantric, uh, Kashmiri Shaivite system, which presents a monistic Shaivite Tantra, right? And, and by the and, and by Shaivite Tantra, generally, of course, anything we say, there could be schools and pockets and, uh, and texts that say something different. But in general, the general thing we could say that there's there's pure consciousness, Brahman, known in Vedanta, in, in the Upanishads as Brahman, but in Tantra, as in Shaivite Tantra, as Parama Shiva, or Pada Bhairava as Shiva, right? That's consciousness. Then consciousness acts. Consciousness is dynamic. Right, the nature of consciousness is dynamic, and that 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 dynamism we call the Devi, right? The goddess. The goddess is the dynamic energy, Shakti, of of Shiva. We have consciousness. Shiva is consciousness, or known in Vedanta as Brahman, and that Brahman acts or has an inherent Shakti, right? So this is slightly different from that. That that's our my general go to, but my my tantric shocked interpretation of things i tend to to we we tend to rest in this kind of foundational idea there's shiva's consciousness and shakti or kali is the manifestation it's manifestation right it's energy the energy of consciousness or the act the and the, the the dynamic energy of consciousness shakti right this is slightly different this is saying i am brahman right so that the the one the 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 one the consciousness itself I am consciousness right and so who, who what is the con what is the shakti of consciousness so sh if Shiva is consciousness in the Shaivite system Shiva is consciousness and shakti is its manifestation here Devi shakti is consciousness and has inherent within her a shakti of manifestation. That we call Shakti or Maya in, in, in Vedanta and in, in, in our topic right now, we're discussing primarily Maya. Right. So it's she's identified, she identifies with Brahman and she has Shakti. That Brahman has an intrinsic Shakti. Right. So let's this is this is what this verse is kind of setting up. It here, it is um, um, uh, uh, Brahman, Chit. Some bit and para Brahman, it is beyond reason, indescribable, incomprehensible, incorruptible. From out of itself evolves a certain power known as Maya. Right. So in the in the Shaivite system, from out of itself, out of Brahman, out of Shiva, out of pure para some bit consciousness, evolves with an energy we call Shakti. Right. Now Shakti itself is identified as Brahman. Out of herself evolves a certain power called Maya. 
right? So she's both Brahman and Shakti, Brahman and Maya, or like this. So let's move on here. Now is describing some qualities, and the next verses for the next two, three weeks probably will be describing the nature of Maya from different points of view, right? So neither it is neither unreal, ne neither real nor unreal is this Maya, nor is it both, or that could be illogical and incongruous. Lacking such characteristics, this indefinite ent entity has always subsisted. This energy, this Shakti, has always been there, but it can but it can never be sent. It can't be said as existing or non-existing, or is real or unreal. We gave, and that's a classic language of of, of classical Advaita Vedanta describing Maya, this mysterious power of Maya, as 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 not as not not. You can't say it's not real because we see it and it exists, but you can't say it's real because it doesn't. It, it is destroyed with the dawn of knowledge, and it's constantly changing. And one of the definitions. And Advaita Vedanta of the real is that which is unchanging, right? So this is this is going to this is going to stretch that definition, right? And challenge that push push against that definition or re re massage that definition. And then this is the verse. These verses I think we these two verses we read in our last meeting, as heat and hairs and fire, as brilliance in the sun, as cool light in the moon. Just so this Maya and hair inheres firmly in me, right? Sri Ramakrishna used that language that within Kali, within Sh there's Brahman and Brahman and Shakti, or Brahman and Kali are one. That is like the energy, the manifested energy is inherent, just like the fire. And he uses these almost identical, like fire, like heat within fire, or milk, a whiteness in milk, or the wiggling motion of a snake. They're inherent. You can speak of them as, se as separately, but they're actually identical. They're the same thing. You can and so here something similar is being said. Into that Maya, the actions of souls, the souls themselves, and the ages, time itself, eventually dissolve without distinction, as worldly concerns disappear in deep sleep. So everything comes out of this Maya, and but also into the, our actions, individual souls, time itself merges back into this Maya. This Maya, which is described as an energy inherent, indescribable energy inherent within the Supreme Brahman or Parama Devi. So this, this is the verse we are on today. Let me find my verse here for easy reading. Um, Swashaktischa sama, sama yogad aham bijatma, bijatmatam gata. Swadhara varanat varanat tasya doshatvam cha samagatam. Swa shaktas cha. Swa shaktihe cha. So this is this first word. Swa shaktas cha. So from swa shakti, this is the, the, the core idea is shakti. This what is that energy? Right. Um, this energy is the Shakti here is is what's being discussed. This is Maya, right? This Shakti, right? That creates this world, right? So she's describing how this happens, how this energy, this whatever this Maya ends up being, right? She says, I it's it's Swashakti. This is my this inherent power, this power, which a few verses earlier said is always existing in her, right? This power is always in her. Right in Vedanta, we say that we would say this power is only in it. If you don't want to use the her him descript descriptor for Brahman, right? But it's an inherent power that's always there, right? By so sama yoga, sama yoga is sama yoga means uh, from um, from that union, uh, um, from uniting together. So I unite with this inherent my own shakti. Right, uniting from my own power, I un from the union of you from uniting from my own power. That's that's how we probably would say it, right? Aham, I. Remember who's the I? This is Bhuvaneshwari, the Supreme Goddess, who's described herself as Chit, um, 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 Sambit, and Brahm, uh, um, um, Brahmaika, uh, the one supreme Brahman, right? So I. Uniting with this inherent power. 
आत्मक आत्म आत्मता गता आत्मता बीज सॉरी बीजात्मतम गता बीज आत्मतम गता बीज मीन सीड राइट सो बीज मीन सीड एंड सो सीड एंड सो वी हैव टू थिंक ऑफ द व्हाट वी मीन बाय सीड राइट देयर इज डिफरेंट वेज वी कैन थिंक ऑफ अ सीड इज समथिंग ऑफ कोर्स द मोस्ट ऑब्वियस इज द सीड ऑफ अ प्लांट राइट फ्रॉम अ फ्रॉम अ सीड कम्स अ प्लांट राइट so that's a beautiful description there right? that that by unite i the supreme brahman the supreme goddess which is identical and one who am the supreme brahman who existed before everything this is how how i exist before everything and then become everything this is how she's saying she does it i unite somehow connect with my own shakti known as maya as described in the previous few verses right from that from that i become a seed from that seed is going to come the, the uh that's when a seed comes sprouts into uh, into a, a a sprout that gets roots and a branch and then a trunk and then uh, branches then uh, leaves then fruit right so you get the whole how the one it's a perfect a seed is a perfect example a perfect uh, um I can't even say it's it's a great symbol a great metaphor but it's because it's literally is that like the meta, a great metaphor for the ocean is water or a drop of water right because it is the ocean it is the same thing so similarly like uh, um it is a, a a seed is a perfect example of the one becoming multiple the one becoming more than itself from inherent within that seed comes everything everything is result of that seed another use of the word seed is 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 the the seed of 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 a of a um 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 like a human seed of the semen or something like that right like from the sexual fluid comes a union uses this world this language of union comes a, the seed from that seed um of the of the sperm and the egg and like that comes that idea of bija right and the same word is used in to to be like that also from that bija comes the human organism like that the through the sexual union comes a a a fertile dynamic seed of potentiality that then expresses another use of the word seed it simply means source right the seed of something is its source so if we want to take it biologically like uh, in in like a vegetable type of seed or take it sexually or take it just to mean source all three could be taken right the piece of art i've shown here this is by um dr uh deepa argya kar right i uh, i've shown a lot of his art before and on facebook you can look it up under art argya a wonderful he's a bengali scholar in tantra bengali forms of tantra and a great artist who's very talented at showing graphically complicated um tantric ontological ideas right so in this particular painting it's it's more from the shiva shakti perspective from the shiva shiva perspective from shiva through union with shakti comes the seed right uh, that that then goes to create this world of of multiplicity something showing like that also swadhara <clears throat> varna tasya doshatvam स्वधारा, स्वधारा, so the second half of the verse describes swadhara but swadhara means she's talking about herself i am the support right i am the support of what is she the support of of this cosmic seed of the world of the what be, of the whole world that the seed that becomes a world i am the support of that right but the nature of maya of the shakti the nature of manifestation is it it has it says a dosha dosha means some fault some problem dosha means fault right dosha twam like fault faultness faultiness dosha twam is like the thing itself twam is like a is like the thing itself right so dosha twam like faultiness or deficiency what is its what, it intrinsic within the shakti that's the, the seed of the world right the source of the world is that it has that that it uh what is it it says obscures it says uh 
uh, varanat. Varanat means concealing. Um, uh, comes from varanat to con to conceal something, right? It has a quality of concealing me, who is its foundation, right? Through union of the shakti, I create. I'm the seed of this universe. The universe expands of countless uh, variety, but it has an in inherent some problem, right? Some and the problem or the fault of it is that it hides me. It this energy comes from me. I am its support. I am its foundation, but it has a tendency or can hide me. Welcome to the world of Maya, right? We see a world. We see ourselves as individuals. We see a world of name, form, nama, rupa, um, um, and variety, right? And our ego, our, indiv our individual, our sense of individual interacts and uh, with this, this beautiful manifested world, right? Which is coming only from her. It's it, She's a seed from everything through her union with Brahman's union with its own shakti creates this world and then we don't see her we get lost in it right this is a a, a very good description of our of our uh, one way of describing this let me say that this is a a i think a very fascinating and useful way of describing our um our, our experiential position i sometimes joke although i'm not joking but i i say it in a little bit of a light-hearted way to myself and to others is that we shouldn't we shouldn't be terribly impressed with our state of awareness right now, right? Uh, we shouldn't be fully satisfied. Perhaps maybe you are satisfied, and we can, God bless you, God has bless you for that, right? But our state of awareness is in conscious, in ignorance, and conscious separation from God, right? Where 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 although there's only God and everything we see is only her comes from her. She's the seed of everything, become everything. But in our daily experience, we lose her. Of course, sadhana is remembering her. And the fruit of sadhana perhaps is seeing her. Right. See, so there's different ways to see her. One is to is to just deny the 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 the, the manifestation. Ignore the manifestation and you see the one that's manifesting or the foundation of the manifestation, the 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 support here. The Swadhara, the Brahman, right? Perhaps that's possible. Another way is to learn to see her, and this is a devotional practice and more tantric practice, to learn to see her in the, to learn knowing that this is an inherent potential defect, doshatma, dosha, is to try to overcome it by noticing her in even in the manifestation. That's a great, uh, great sadhana. That's more our orientation, the pick of bhakti yoga. So she is the swadhara. She is the, the 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 foundation of everything, right? Through her mysterious power, by union with this inherent shakti of Maya, she creates. She becomes the foundation. She creates the seed, the source of everything. Now everything expands, and we lose the one source. In the many, we it obscures the one, and. Ambikananda myself earlier, we were just in, in yesterday, last night as we were trying to understand the Sanskrit of these, the, the Sanskrit of this. And I said, well, imagine, so imagine some uh, uh, divine mother, right, uh, 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 weaving something. She's making, a, she's making a blanket, right? She makes this blanket and she, as she makes it, makes it, makes it, makes it, makes it, right? And now you don't see her. We see only the blanket and we miss her. Even though she's the one making the blanket, but slowly, slowly in the process of it, inherent, the problem with a sh making a blanket or a, a, a chudder, right? It has an inherent fault. It has an inherent fault that it could easily cover a camera or cover the knower and, 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 and we'd, we could lose, lose it, right? Let me see if I have, if I wrote it down here real quick. One second here.
Well, I think well, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the answer. So Sri Ramakrishna uses a very similar example of Mahamaya um, um, being like a cloth between between you two, and you can't see. So at the end of at, uh, my, I, I, I realized I, I have actually a graphic for this. I'll read a little section from the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna, illustrating kind of almost this exact point or this exact point, from a slightly different angle, right? So this is a this is an inherent uh, um, danger, perhaps in 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 Maya. Sorry, I got, sorry, I got two pages of notes here. So in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, so that's interesting. So she is unchanging. That's one of the see one of the we what, last week or a couple three weeks ago, I guess. We discussed in Advaita Vedanta, um, an example in Shankaracharya's introduction to the Brahma Sutra, he, he gives his own definitions, what he means by real. And one of the things he means by real is that which is unchanging, that which existed in the past, present, and future is, unre is real, right? And so she is real in that sense, the capital R, that it's, she is the unchanging. But then she creates actually or seemingly a, a changing world. Now, Advaita Vedanta will then say, well, the fact that it's changing, it means it's unreal, right? In certain forms, the Tantra would say, no, the fact that it's changing doesn't mean it's unreal. It just changes the definition of real. Unchanging doesn't necessarily mean unreal, right? So however you think of it, the, but but the changing hides the changeless. The realm of time, the, the multiple hides, obscures the one. This is the main point, of I think, of this verse. There is an interesting now thinking in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Vaishnava text, to which I'm a little more expert at, and given many, many um, thousands of hours of classes, I was remembering in one point, um, um, in the opening, there, there's a scene, of course, we all know this scene, that from Vishnu lying, Vishnu is lying on the causal ocean, right, ocean of causation, from his navel comes a lotus, right, from this, and on this lotus, so this lotus opens and Lord Brahma is there who creates the world, right? So Brahma and the lotus has is interpreted in the later section of the Bhagavatam. I forget the exact story. Please forgive me. It's been a long time, but I remember the point, which is the important part. Um, that this world, the lotus that's blooming is this world. Brahma is the creator of this world, but the lotus he sits on is the expanding, the expanding world, right? You can see lotus opening, the, the one becoming the many becoming a plant right becoming the world now in the original story brahma looks out and doesn't he doesn't know where he is or what he is or where he comes from right so then he hears in his uh, he hears in his consciousness tapaha tapaha meditate austerity so he closes his eyes symbolically by closing his eyes, he goes inside and in the story going inside means going back through that lotus stalk, right, into the source that notice what comes from the navel of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is also seen, of course, he's the Supreme Lord in the story, but he's also consciousness, all-pervading consciousness. So consciousness is the source, the seed, the bija of the lotus of the world, the manifested world. But in this one section of the Bhagavatam, people challenge. I don't see the seed. Right. When you see a plant and you say, oh, there's no seed. Right. There's no sort. You look, you can look at a plant and say, I look at the plant really carefully. And I hear the scriptures say some weird religious group says that that in order to have a plant, plants come from seeds. And and but I don't see a seed anywhere. I've I've investigated the plant again and again. And nowhere do I see a seed. So Brahma's in a similar sense, he says, when we see the world, the blossom lotus of the world, we don't see the seed. Why? Because the seed has become the world, right? The seed itself has changed into the world, right? And actually, in the next verse, uh, um, Ma is going to say almost that, that she evolves into the world, right? And in the process, evolve into the world, we, it's easy to, when you see a plant, when, 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 like, we, we recently planted Tulsi, we were almost out of Tulsi, our, some of our plants have left their bodies uh, this last winter. Some older plants didn't survive the winter. So we've Usha has planted a bunch of seeds of Tulsi. In the beginning, it's really clear, really easy to see when you see a, a seed split 
and sent its fierce roots. And you can see, I mean, the seed and the plant, the, the fact that the plant comes from the seed is obvious, yeah. right? But as that plant gets bigger and the roots get bigger, the seed disappears. The seed is no longer obvious, right? And so we could theoretically say there's no evidence that Tulsi plants come from seeds, right? Because we don't, where is it? The seed has become the plant, right? So the nature of the plant is to obscure the seed. You could easily lose the seed if you don't know how what to look for, right? That's the point. It's an inherent fault or a potential defect, maybe not of the seed itself or not of Maya itself that we lose we lose it, but it's a it's one of perhaps an inherent fault in ourselves that in the many we, it's easy to miss the one, easy to miss the source, the seed, right? So by the by, uh, Maya is a power of the Devi, right? As our previous verses said, Maya is a, is a power is a Shakti or power of the Devi, uh, or of, of Brahman, right? By this power we get name and form, Namarupa. We get time, space, and causation. We get manifestation. We get um, um, multiplicity and variety, or individuality, duality, all these things, right? But seeing all this, seeing all what? Name, form, time, space, causation, manifestation, multiplicity, duality, individuality, separateness, all the things we, all that, we don't see Brahman or Devi. That's, this is the description as being described in this verse. The, the, this is, um, so it is answering perhaps a problem, a question that we may have. If, why don't we see her? She's a source of everything. Why don't we see her? She's explaining, she's, simultaneously the source of everything and because of that inherent in that we can miss her if we're not looking really carefully so this painting is by another great bengali i think he's bengali but he lives in mauritius his name is kesh dun d-h-u-n he's also on face we can see his art he has a very nice facebook group called shiva shakti home shrines you want to see from shrines from all over the world, as well as beautiful. He's, he does beautiful puja, um, and he's been very um, generous to, to myself over the years. If I have some question on puja, he has good knowledge of puja. He's a young man with good knowledge of puja and a very talented artist. Anyway, this is one of his one of my favorite paintings of his. I like his style very much, right? And um, <clears throat> and I like this. It kind of has a, a quality. It's a picture of Kali and with Shiva, but it's a quality of um of um. Actually, this is a um, 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 half Shiva, half, anyways, um, has a quality of, 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 a, of like the cosmos being generated from the painting, from the picture. So I like, it's maybe not an exact painting of what we're describing, but I thought it was a good, help me to kind of visualize her as that, as a source that becomes, you see the one becomes many, it becomes fuzzy, right? The, she becomes fuzzy, she becomes messy. She becomes chaotic. It's easy, or what's what's the other word? Um, uh, like when, uh, uh, the, you know, the, there's a, a uh, what's the term? These be things you look through and you look like that, and all the different kaleidoscopes come. It's like kaleidoscopic. There it is. Thank you, somebody. Kaleidoscopic. And this painting has a little bit of that. It has a lot of um, static in it and chaos in it. But you can see if if you don't focus on all that, you can see her. Right, she's still behind the whole thing, so that's one of the reasons I chose it. Anyways, Kesh Dun is the artist. Chaitanyasya sama yogan nirmitatvam cha katyate prapancha parinamascha sama sama vaitvam uchate. So, in the last verse, it described. By uniting with this inherent power, Shakti, this my own Shakti known as Maya, I become the cosmic seed. This is flushing that out a little bit more. Through association, also the word samyoga, in other words, uniting, by mixing, uniting, connecting, right? Samyoga, same word, word in the previous uh, uh, verse, slightly different. By uniting, here it says by associating, just a slightly different idea, but the same word is there. I think the same thing is being said, 
right? Chaitanyasya, Samayogan, through its, through its association, the its here refers to that Shakti, Maya, association with consciousness, right? Now, it, before I unite with Shakti, who, to Maya, now Maya is uniting with consciousness, right? So it's Chaitanya, Chaitanyasya. Let me find my words here. Chaitanyasya of consciousness, Sama Yogat, from this uniting together of consciousness, right? Uh, nirmitatvam. Nirmitatvam. Nirmita means means um, cause, right? It's one of the classic words for cause. Nirmitatva means like causeness, right? And here he has translated. Um, uh, C. Mackenzie Brown, the, the translation that like our primary English uses from C. Mackenzie Brown's translation as the efficient cause, right? And Swami Vigyanananda, uh, Sakura's disciple, Sri Ramakrishna's disciple, also describes it as the um, efficient cause. Um, Swami Satyananda, another translator, has also used the term efficient cause, right? Because what's being described, even though Nimita, um, Nimita, Simply means cause and causeness, nirmitam, nin, um, nirmitat, nirmitatvam, this causeness. It's describing in the sentence, the, the purpose of it describing what we call in Western philosophy the efficient cause, right? Efficient cause. Second here. Is, is who's doing it? Right, like the efficient cause of a table is the one who made the table, right? So when you think of that type, like cre like if you see a creation, who's the creator? That type of views of causation, right? So she is saying, I am the creator, right? Uh, or, or But Maya is the creator of this world. But this Maya is inherent, an energy within me, which existed before creation, right? It's inherent in me that's always existed in me, right? It, by its connection by its some yoga with me as pure consciousness earlier verse chit adasambit brahmaika right the one brahman consciousness pure awareness like this right by its own consciousness that is the cause she or um, maya is the efficient cause she's the one that is doing it she does this world, right? She is the cause in that sense. If you think of, of a creation, she's a creator. If you think of a design, design, you think of a designer to use that kind of language, right? Uh, uh, um, right. Maya is called the efficient cause of this world. Let's see what it's... Yep. Katya, uh, katyate, katyate means um, uh, is called, is known, right? So Maya is known as the efficient cause of this world uh, uh, by its when it's connected to consciousness, right? Second half, prapancha parinamacha. Prapancha parinamacha samma vaitva uchate. Prapancha. Prapancha means, it says here he's translated prapancha as the visible realm. Right. So prapancha means this visible world, the visible world, the expressed world, the manifested world, the spread out world. Actually, inherent in it is spreading out. Sami Vigyanananda and Sami Satananda both focus on the, the et etymological meaning of uh, prapancha, means like with the five, right? And so Maybe it comes from, I've tried to investigate it, and the usually most use of the word prapancha is just in Vedanta as the manifested world is the prapancha. The manifested world is prapancha, and, and, um, um, and it is also unmanifested like this, right? But it could mean to do with, to do with the five senses or the five elements, something like that, you know, but that's our etymo, et, et, uh, the source of the word. But we'll just take it as this the spread out world. Right, the visible world, the um, uh, uh, man, the manifested world, and the manifold world. 
and prapancham in the manifoldness, you can almost say, like the principle of manifoldness of this world, right? Um, um, uh, uh, is it prapancha parina mancha? Parinama. Parinama means he's he uses the word evolution. That's a correct word. So parinama is a very specific term used in Tantra and in Vedanta as evolution. Parinama means one thing is changes into something else, right? So that means that uh, an effect is in has within it the cause, right? So um uh, So the, the cause transforms itself in a real way into the effect, right? So you could think of something like um, gold and gold. Uh, this, is, uh, this is maybe not the perfect, I'm stretching the example, but this is what the example came to me right now. Maybe an example of a slightly different point, but we, this is a useful place to start. The example of, of, of a gold, gold, and gold um, um, uh, uh, and a gold ornament. A gold ornament is nothing but gold, right? But then you can even do, but that's one sense we can, we can, like I said, it's not exactly the point, but that's when we can think of it, that gold and gold becomes a gold ornament, right? It, uh, um, um, gold ornament doesn't, is not completely unrelated to gold, right? It, it is gold itself, right? But this is like, so also another another one we could say another thing is sometimes used in some of the examples of like like milk and yogurt, right? Milk becomes yogurt, right? Yogurt is something different than milk, but it's not like milk. It, it but it but it within yogurt is milk, even if it's something different, not just looks different like a gold ornament, right? Something maybe even is different. Milk has become yogurt in some sense. Right, you know, so and it's not like like oh, milk has remained untouched and yogurt only appears. No, it literally has become changed. Right, so in both of these senses, we can think of parinama here. Right, either the one thing has taken many shapes, or the one thing has become other things, or many things. Right, while still in a very real sense being the one thing, in the many things, something like this. Right, so through its evolution into the visible realm. Right, it's through uh, uh, parinama into the visible visible realm, prapancha. Right, sama vahita uh, va uh, va uh, vaitvam. Go back to vaitvam here. So vaitvam combine. So vaitvam means like the combination of matter. Right, so it, 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 it combine everything combines, right? And so here, things combining to do make something is so he's translated this into a, using a Western philosophical definition as the material cause, right? So it's the it's a thing it, the like the material cause of 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 a, of a wooden table is wood, right? The efficient cause is the builder of the table. The one who decides and builds a table is the efficient cause, right? And the one who does it, right? And but the material cause of a table is wood, right? So through associate with consciousness, Maya becomes the efficient cause, right? Through its as it evolves into the material world, as it evolves into the express world, it's known as the material cause. Right, it's both. So it's it's saying that she is both the maker of the table and the wood of the table, that which which the table's made up from. To use that example, right? She's the maker of the world and the world itself, right? And by he, she here refers to Maya, which is an intrinsic power of 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 Devi or Brahman. Right. Also, Guruji, we um, were discussing. You mentioned it. In the last verse about the the weave, and and yes. what possibly could be a Sanskrit dvani or pun or play on words, mm -hmm. vai can also mean a female weaver. Yeah. 
So this is perfect. Right? Right? She becomes a weaver. She's the cloth and she's the weaver of the cloth. Right. That could be the plane that that's that's doing this. This uh, uh, very, very thank you, Samaji. Vai means vai, vai, vai is means a female weaver. So you obviously it's can't say obviously, but it seems very likely that it's playing on the on this idea, right? And uch, uchate means um, is called right. So the so the, and the last word katyate and here uchate is known as so Maya is known as right as the efficient cause of the world uh, um, by its connection with consciousness. And Maya, through its evolution into the realm, evolution into the as the world, into the manifolded world, is known. Is also called is known as the material cause. So it's so she is both known as the efficient cause and the material cause. So this is a few weeks ago. We had mentioned, I think, in some some of the post discussion, post uh, class discussion, I think it was it was Sundari. She was asking, "What are the four causes?" And I said, "I'm trying to remember." They're not at the tip of my, they're no longer at the tip of my tongue, right? But for this purposes, we probably should mention uh, because he's using two terms that are that um, English equivalents of 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 um, um, of of, uh, of Western philosophical important concepts, right? So Aristotle, you he says when you see something, what's the explanation for that thing, right? Where and where, what and why is it? is the question right so why and where and from and from what right is what is the, another way of saying what's the cause and when you say cause he he figured you mean you can mean four different things um in sanskrit uh, logic some other things have been other aspects of cause have come but in the western system we could fold them under one of these four categories also so the material two of them are mentioned in here material cause this is, like I said, the the substance, the matter, the which is without which something can't be said to exist, right? Uh, is very much uh, a cause of something, right? Right. Uh, then the then the, the efficient cause, the one who acts upon it, the agent, right? Is the efficient cause if there is a need to be an agent? Sometimes the efficient cause of something could be the cause uh, natural. You can say, what's the cause of? Like you could see, you know, you. you so things like cell phones and computers and cups and 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 clothes and and desks. There's somebody who does it. But you, let, let's say you see um, 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 a groove in a stone near a river, or water is flowing down. So the the then the, what is the efficient cause of that? Is it somebody? Did somebody do that? Maybe because oh, there has to be a maker of stones and water and and the principles of law, laws of nature that cause water to wear down stone so there has to be a creator or a designer like that but you can we don't have to go so theological the then the 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 cause is the water is the cause so even a natural force can be an efficient an efficient cause right um then there's also the uh the um um the formal cause and this is i'm gonna say uh um please forgive me if i get these a little wrong they're not they're super fresh in my mind but like what makes a table a table is not just wood and the table maker, but also like its ability to hold things up and to have four legs and three legs and be used in a certain way. And its formal definition, something along those lines. And then there's the final cause, the goal of something, the purpose of something. The purpose of a table is to hold stuff. The purpose of a cloth is to wear or to, or in this sense, the block views, right? You know, it's like, uh, uh, so what is that? Um, um, what is its ultimate goal? And actually, the term he, several in the, in the last verse, uh, gatta gatti has been used, and sometimes that sometimes translated in some verses as the goal of something, right? So, um, so we can say, what is the goal of something? That is a, a, a what? It, why did Ma do this? If she is a doer of all this, right? The fishing cause, material cause. What's the ultimate purpose of it, right? So, different schools of Tantra have answers to that too, right? Here, it's not answered directly. But anyway, different forms of causation. Um, that's uh, so through its association with consciousness, Maya is called the efficient cause of the world. Through its evolution into the visible realm, it is said to be the material cause. So this term parinama, parinama evolution, 
right? So there's a term parinamavad. Parinamavad is the teachings or the view of, of a philosophical, theological philosophical view of parina of, the, of evolution, evolutionists, right? And the evolutionists in 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 there's there is su subtle differences in different schools of parinamavad also, but those for our purpose so probably don't have to go into them. Um, but it's sometimes it's often. And I think maybe here, the fact that it's being used in an argument that's going to be using really Advaitic, Vedantic language, the fact that it's using this poor Parinamavad may be a, a signal to us to also not to forget the Tantric perspective, the Parinamavad perspective, right? So it's used in, yeah, Parinama is counterpoised or counterbalanced or in comp comp competition with, right, Vivartavad. Vivartavad. Vivartavad is the is the theory of apparent transformation or apparent evolution. Right? Parinamavad is real transformation or real evolution. And Vivartavad is apparent transformation or apparent trans, trans uh, evolution. Right. So apparent, apparent, in other words, how to say it, it means false appearance. Right, so it's not just misunderstanding; it's a loose. It's like it. So they, there's a couple classic examples of, a, of, a, of a, the the poster examples of of Vivartavad is like a mirage. A mirage isn't there. It appears to be there, but it's not really there. That's one. Or we've we've gone back to this one a lot of the snake within a a snake within a rope. Right, we see a snake, but the snake was never there. It's not like the rope evolved into a snake right right it looks like a snake but it never was a snake right so the world we see looks real but it was never there right it's we were misreading we're missing it and with proper knowledge it disappears in some sense right and at least at least we get we see what's really there so but the parinamavad view is that no it actually is there right and and so so look, if we think about the snake and the rope example, so you can't really say that the snake, that a rope became a, a snake, right? So that's still a misreading. But we, but we, so the example more imagine of like, like gold becoming gold ornaments or clay becoming clay cups, right? At one one edge of it, or back to our or or yogurt or milk becoming yogurt. It's not like oh, really, it's milk. But we, due to our ignorance, see yogurt, right? There's no way yogurt is real, right? It's a transformation of milk, right? Gold ornaments are real. They're transformation in some sense of gold. Clay cups are real. They're a transformation in some sense of clay, right? Uh, uh, so something along those lines. So in the Vivartava, let's, I'll, I'll give a, a kind of a, a tight, clear definition of Vivartavad because that's a position. I can't say I'm fighting against it because that's the classic debate position. I, we carry a, 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 a danda from the from our order representing this very philosophy, but we have to mitigate it in the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna and the Shakta teachings, right? And I think these verses will hint at Vivartavad in certain places, but because it's a Shakta text and a highly tantric text, right? And uh, uh, that it's, I, I think it uses Advaita Vedanta language, right? But softens it and presents a more, a more shock to more of Ivartavad perspective. So we'll, we'll present, we have to try to clear, clear the ideas a little bit, right? So the Ivartavad, let's, let's, let's give a more clear definition, right? The world we see, what, what we say the world was, name and form. Time, space, causation, variety, individuality, duality, manifestation, experience, this world of multiple experience. Our Jeev Jagat, right, is it, to use this term, right, is merely an unreal manifestation of Brahman. That's a weird thing to say, an unreal manifestation of the Supreme Truth, right? Although Brahman appears to undergo transformation, in fact, no real change takes place. 
the myriad of the the variety of beings are unreal manifestations as only one real being brahman exi ultimate exists which is unborn unchanging and entirely without parts one non-dual without a second these are we've used that language. even the devi used that language in the end at, at the end of last of chapter one i am one without a second using the language one non-dual without a second right but here the one and so the, that the, so in one sense the the the, the variegatedness the manifold right the manifestation of prapancha it's not real it can't be real because reality is always one unchanging without a second right unborn unchanging entirely without parts these are the, the definitions right now So in Tantra, so I have to be careful, but we can say we can say certain forms of Shakta monistic Tantra will say something, will use this language in a way that some Vedanta, Advaita Vedantas will cringe. It says, you're using the words wrong, you can't say that, right? But still we say it, right? So let's see what we say, right? So it's a real manifest. So it's a real manifestation, right? But you, the world and living beings are a real manifestation of Brahman. But the definition of Brahman, of real, the assumed definition of Brahman is, is that which is unchanging, without parts, and unborn. These are the three categories in uh, Shankaracharya's introduction to Brahma Sutra, if I remember properly. Uh, unborn, without, with, with uh, unborn, uh, 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 permanent uh, um, and unchanging, right? Past, present, and future, and without parts. Yet we so if that's the definition of real of, un, of real, then anything that's changing, born, and with parts is unreal. But Parinamavad Tantra, right? Says no, no. It's a real manifestation but here it's a real manifestation of a temporary world right so the world is temporary and names and forms are temporary that doesn't make them unreal right just like gold cups aren't ultimately real if by real you mean for all time it's always been a gold cup and we'll always book no eventually gold cups were before somebody made them into a cup a gold cup was not a was not a cup it was only gold and eventually at the end of time the gold will exist the cup will disappear right but the gold cup is real right it's a real manifestation of gold right it's just a temporary manifestation of gold right or or uh, uh, um so yogurt had a source in milk it there was a moment it was born it, it, it exists only temporarily and it has parts. It's not one thing, only one thing, but it's, it's not like a, it's not a false manifestation. It's a temporary manifestation. So it's, it's pushing back on this definition of real, right? Real is Brahman is real. It's manifestation, her manifestation through its power of Maya is real, though temporary, though with parts, though with a beginning, though with a source, it has a bija, a source. It has a creator, an efficient cause. It has a material cause, right? It has a, a like, but it, it's therefore it's real, although temporary. So it's really pushing back at this idea of this, this, um, this, it's, and, and, and the argument, this is a big argument between Advaita Vedanta and certain forms of monistic tantra uh, that hold a, a real, a real, but temporary and variegated with the source world. Right, is that these that this definition that reality has to be has to have these qualities to be real? You're the, the, that's an assumed definition. We can assume a different definition, right? That a real thing can evolve, or a real thing can give birth to another real thing, or a real thing can exist for a little time and then disappear and no longer exist. A real thing can exist separately from other real things. And there's all kinds of schools of Vedanta, Shuddhadvaita, and all kinds of schools that hold just that. The real thing has become many real things, even though those real things are dependent, right? Jeev and Jagat are dependent on Ishwar or Brahman in certain forms of, 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 of devotional Vedanta, right? So 
they're dependent. They're not. They're not like. They're not like co-eternal, uh, competing supreme realities. They're aspects of the supreme reality that that are real in in a very real. They're real in a very real way. Although they don't. Only Brahman is Brahman in its by the definition of Brahman. If we mean by Brahman that which is without a source, without parts, and without change, then if we mean just that. We can say we can describe. Oh, Brahman is just that. But what about everything else we see? All the other things that are real, in some sense, right? Right. Uh, uh, um, so this is what's being described. You know, the, the how how she through her intrinsic power of Brahman, her intrinsic power of Maya, her own power uniting with consciousness has become the efficient cause and the material cause of every of a real but temporary world. Right. It, if we choose. How are we how we're using the word real? If we're assuming Chankaracharya's definition of real, then thing, our experiences don't match. But perhaps that definition is arbitrary, right? This is a big argument, and, and I, I can be attacked, and I've been attacked, right? <laughs> right? Or this position has been attacked logically, but I think it can defend itself because it's certain points like to the response of, well, that's not what you mean by real. Yes, it is. And then you you get to this like foundational point where you're just disagreeing on foundational concepts, right? Uh, um, 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 and so it's just if you assume if your assumption is this is what it, this has to be to be real, but that maybe that's not my assumption. Maybe our assumption is something different, right? And maybe that something different assumption is also found in the scriptures. For instance, in this one where the Devi herself is speaking the things, right? So we have to think so. Um, um, we've described the Devi, right? Also, oh, in, in 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 previous discussions, we talk about Sri Ramakrishna described, um, and last week we read uh, Kali Brahman, this idea that Kali and Brahman are identical, right? And so, so, so here, Kali in this particular unique sense is Shakti or Maya, right? This power of Shakti that inherent in Brahman, one with Brahman, identical with Brahman, a dynamic absolute. The supreme absolute truth is inherently dynamic, right? That's the idea of Shaktism, right? That they're one thing, right? So we transferred that that idea of Kali Brahman to this text to Bhuvaneshwari Brahman. Bhuvaneshwari is Brahman, right? So it's so Bhuvaneshwari is not just the inherent Shakti, Maya. She's Brahman itself that has an inherent Shakti of Maya. So this is upping the theological, ontologic position of the goddess not just the power of Brahman, that's one with Brahman, but Brahman itself that has a power, a lower power called Maya. Bhuvaneshri is a Prem goddess who has a power called Maya. She's Brahman, she's Shakti. She also has a Shakti that creates, right? That creates this world. So we think like in 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 in, in Sankhya, we have this Purusha Pakriti idea. In, in, in Vedanta, we have this Maya, Brahman, Maya idea. In Shaivai, Shaivai Tantra, we have Shiva Shakti idea, right? So here, I would say we'd have a Bhuvaneshwari Maya idea. Bhuvaneshwari is her, that is Brahman, that also has a power that creates, right? So what time is it? Okay, it's, I think we're good. Let me let me go back to our verse real quick here. So I, I included... Uh, Swami Ambikananda, one of his translations, from his translation, the Katamrita, this is from volume one, right? Um, um, uh, um, this is part of the, I read from this very um, uh, chapter last week, or three weeks ago, our last meeting, right? The, this is on the boat ride with Keshav Sen and Vijay Krishna Goswami, right? And the discussions on, pretty much, he's we get this great idea of Kali Brahman, that Kali and Brahman are identical, Abed, right? And so a lot of, within this conversation, many important things are said, right? So, uh, um, um, well, I'll read a, a, a few, just to meditate a little bit on these ideas. Vijay, this is Vijay Krishna Goswami, the great Vaishnava who became a very famous Vaishnava saint in his own right. Reverend Sir, talking to Sri Ramakrishna, why are we bound in this way? Why aren't we able to see God? This is a response to this question. 
right? By obscuring me its own basis, this power is prone to defect, right? Due to Maya, due to the world of multiplicity, we don't see the one. And in that world of multiplicity, it's Jeev Jagat. It's the individual and the sense of individuality, separate individual ego-centric self, and the world of multiplicity. The combination between these two make the one. We're obsessed with our, our oneness, our ego sense of individuality in a world of multiplicity. It's very hard to see the one as support of all this, right? So this is what Thakur is, this is the question. Why aren't we able to see God? It says, Sri Ramakrishna, Maya is only an individual's ego, right? So this is slightly different points, but the same points, right? This is like, so what is, he's also, Sri Ramakrishna is saying, the reason we don't see God is because of Maya, right? The Devi in this, in this last few verses says, why don't we see God? Because of Maya. She creates this universe, and in that process, to this power of Maya, Maya has a, a dosha, has a defect that we don't see her who is the support of everything, the cause, support, source, the doer, material cause, efficient cause of, 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 of everything, of Jeev and Jagat, right? So similar, he says, it is Maya. But now he's looking not so much on the, the multigated, the multiflarious uh, um, 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 uh, um, dual world of, 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 my, of, the, uh, of, of variety, right, of the many, right, but also about the ego, the jeev part. We've talked about the jagat part, but what about the jeev part? That sense of individuality as separate from, that doesn't let us to see the one behind us and behind everything, right? This ego, it says, Maya is only the individual's ego. This ego has kept everything they veiled. This ego is, has kept everything veiled, right? Once the eye dies, the trash is taken out. This is a great line uh, that I don't think is in the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna in quite the same way, right? Once the eye dies, the ego dies, the trash is taken out. This is actually bold in the original, right? If by God's grace, someone has realized that they aren't the doer, then that person has become a jiva mukta. They have nothing more to fear. They're not the doer. How are we not the doer? Well, in this verse, he says, I'm the efficient cause through my connection with Maya. My, when I'm connected with my own Shakti, I become the efficient cause, the doer, as well as that which is done. Right. So she we we think we're the doer, we're not seeing the real doer. Right. They have nothing more to fear. It's as if this Maya or I is like a cloud. Because of an insignificant cloud, the sun can't be seen. So you think you have the, the huge sun and the seemingly infinite sky and one small little cloud, which is just some condensed liquid, right? Uh, 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 condensed and, and con con condensated or condensed liquid, right? Because of that, we don't see the, the huge powerful sun in, an, in, 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 in a vast, seemingly infinite sky, we don't see because of a small cloud, right? So this small thing of maya, the small thing of ego, of the many, or of me as individual, or the world of, 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 of the many, we don't, see the, we don't see the sky. We don't see the sun. And really, I think about this example a lot, right? Because of an insignificant cloud, the sun can't be seen. As soon as the cloud has passed by, the sun can be seen. If just once, this is bold, by the Guru's grace, this eye consciousness goes away, then you have the vision of God. Sri Ramachandra, Lord Ram, who is God incarnate, is not even four feet away. So this is Sri Ramakrishna. This is a very, we even, I should have used a poster. I have some poster art of this also, of Lakshman, this is when, when they went into the forest, you have um, um, uh, Ram in the front, and in between you have uh, Sita, and then behind you have Lakshman. Ram is God. Sita is Shakti. In this particular story, Maya, right? The world who manifests the world. And Lakshman is the individual soul. This is the meta meta metaphor, right? Um, that's used, I think it's also in the um, Adhyatmika Ramayana. This metaphor is there. And Sri Ramakrishna often quoted 
scenes from the Adhyatmika Ramayana, a, a small non-dualistic, yet Shakta oriented, strongly sh tantric but Advaitic interpretation of the Ramayana called the Adhyatmika Ramayana. Small, easy to read, very wonderful. Right? Ramakrishna Mission publishes a nice translation if you're interested. See uh, um, anyways, um, Sri Rama Chandra, who is God incarnate, is not even four feet away. Since Sita, who is like Maya's veil, is between Lakshman, who is like the individual being, can't see God. Right? So because when they're walking on a single path, if, if Sita is there, Lakshman can't see Rama. Right? And then he uses the exact example of, of, the, of, 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 the, of the cloth. Right? Um, look. I'm, hi I'm, I'm hiding with this towel in front of my face and you can't and you can't see me right yet I'm so close right in the same way God is the closest of all yet because of this veil you can't see her right this is the perfect example right he's the closest of all she says I'm the support of everything because of Maya it, Maya has a dosha a fault that it obscures me the supreme underlying, obvious reality right but the real nature of each living being is being consciousness bliss our real nature is Satchitananda. these are the qualities of brahman right but through this maya or ego they acquire all kinds of bodies and have forgotten their own real nature then it goes into a description of upadi things that we attach ourselves to things that we by association, which they seem to change the one um, to which they are, they are that we like we hold on to something, and the very thing affects our own consciousness. This is a great, interesting that subconsciously I grab my phone. This is the world's, I think, modern day upadi factory. Right? You hold, you hold, you hold a um, um, a, a iPhone, and immediately it changes all kinds of self identities. Right. So I'll give a few, because it's a part of the quote, I'll, even though it's getting slightly off our topic, it's, an, it's always good to think of Sri Ramakrishna's teachings on a, on a Wednesday night, right? It says, uh, uh, but the real nature of each living being is Satchitananda, being conscious as bliss, but through our Maya or ego, they've acquired all kinds of upadis and have, only, and have forgotten their own real nature. One by one, upadis accumulate. And the nature of a living being changes. You've noted, you'll notice that someone who's wearing a black bordered cloth will immediately start humming the tunes of uh, Nidu's love songs. And before you know it, they're playing cards and holding a walking stick when going out for a stroll. This is a popular singer of his time, of Takori's time. Um, um, and he was a favorite singer of the Babu class. This is the gentleman, the kind of westernized Bengali uh, aristocratic class. So, you know, listening to, uh, uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, if you wear, if you dress this type of, this black bordered cloth is, is part of the, that class of Bengali gentlemen. And so you start where you dress like that, you start singing songs and holding a stick and acting, you know, you, you, you imagine if you put on a certain type of dress, you'll start behaving a certain way. This is kind of the idea, right? You, we, if I dress like a punk or start acting, I'll start acting punk, right? If I if I dress like a rapper, I'll start acting, you know, whatever. However, we dress. That's kind of the equivalent. He's saying by wearing a particular way, you start behaving a certain way and start singing a certain songs and and walking differently. It changes you. The very things. This is the nature of Maya. The things of Maya, they have an effect on us. That's the thing, right? Mm. Even a sickly man, right? If he puts on boots, he immediately starts whistling, and when he's climbing steps, he constantly skips them, skip ups them like an English, like the English do. The boots are the way, the way they, these are English, these are the Englishmen of the colonial period's boots, right? If you put on boots, you start skipping around and whistling like an Englishman, right? Your clothes have an effect on you, right? If a person has a pen in their hand, right? I, I do this all the time. If a person has a pen in their hands, the influence of the pen is such that immediately, as soon as they get a scrap of paper, they start scrabbling, scribbling and doodling, doodling on it. The pen, having a pen has an effect on us. If we are conscious, if we're attached to this new party, so it affects it, it affects the very thing, the one that's, that holds in it. It has an effect on us, right? Right. Money too is a huge upadi. This isn't in bold also. As soon as a person has money, they become a different person. 
they don't stay the same. Right. And then he told a little funny story. A particular Brahmin used to come around here. Outwardly, they were quite humble. One day he went to Konagar with Ridoy, his nephew. As they were going off, off, getting off the boat, I saw the Brahmin sitting at the bank of the Ganga. Maybe he was enjoying some fresh air. Seeing us, he said, Hey there, Takur. So, how are you? Hearing the tone of his words, I said to Ridoy, Hey, Ridoy, this person has come into some money. Otherwise, that's why he talks this way. He was talking with great pomp. Hey, holy man, how are you doing? Instead of like, oh, Jai Thakur, you know, give me your blessings, the way you'd approach Sri Ramakrishna, a rich man approaching Sri Ramakrishna, but he said, oh, this man must have had money. It changes our consciousness, right? A frog had a rupee, another funny story, right? Its, its rupee was in its hole. An elephant crossed over the hole as it was going along. Then the frog came out, very angrily started making kicking gestures at the elephant and said, you've got such nerve that you are walking over me. Such is the pride of money, right? A, a frog with a rupee thinks I'm a very important person. How dare that, that elephant walk over me like that? Because these are silly ideas, but, but the, the, this is the effect of Maya, the effect of the ego, the effect of the, multi, of the world. As soon as you see it, it has an effect on you. We get lost, right? Although, he says, our real nature is such Ananda. Right, our living the but the real nature of right, but through this Maya or ego, we've acquired all kinds of bodies and have forgotten our own real nature. Or in devotional language, we don't see God. Why do because this is the question why aren't we able to see God? This is why we're not able to see God. Right, there's a We, uh, I don't she she's uh, yoga Maya is not here I don't think in our in our August assembly here right um her name yoga uh, uh, um, um, our dear devotee here yoga Maya right uh, it's a multi meaning name this term yoga Maya but Sri Ramakrishna used the term yoga Maya in a unique way also a very specific way so Govinda in another conversation a devotee named Govinda asked Sri Ramakrishna what is why do they call her Yoga Maya? Right. And Sri Ramakrishna says, Yoga Maya means Purusha in union with Pakriti. Right. Or we would say, we may say that's that's used in Sankhya language. We could say Kali in union with Shiva, right? Or, or Kali was union with Brahman, or Shiva in union with Shakti, or here Bhuvaneshwari in who's who's everything in union with Maya, right? Right. Everything. Anything you see is a union of Purusha and Pakriti. In the image of Shiva Kali, Kali is standing on top of Shiva. Shiva is like a corpse lying there. Kali gazes, gaze is fixed on Shiva. All this is only the union of Purusha and Pakriti. Purusha is inactive. That is why Shiva is like a corpse. Pakriti in union with Purusha is doing all the work. She is creating, preserving, and destroying. So Sri Ramakrishna, of course, as a Kali devotee, Constantly refer to the most common iconographic form of Kali, Dakshina Kali, that like we're worshiping, where Shiva is lying down on a corpse and Kali standing on top. Here, Shiva is Purusha or Brahman, or that Brahman who is Shiva and Purusha is also Bhuvaneshwari. She's the Supreme Brahman, right? And she manifested through her own intrinsic power, which in Vedanta and in, in, in Upanishad, like that, is referred to as Maya. So, Let's let's look at our verses real quick here. Let's see where are we here. By uniting with this inherent power of mine, I become the cosmic seed. By obscuring me its own basis, this power, Maya, is prone to defects. Through its association with consciousness, Maya is called the efficient cause of the world. Through its evolution into the visible realm. It is said to be the material cause. Jai Sri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Mahamayi Ki Jai, Jai Samaji Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Bhuvaneshwari Devi Ki Jai. So thank you for your kind attention. Are there any comments or questions or realizations? Oh, oh Guruji, um, Alex had earlier question. Yeah. Swamiji, what is meant by the visible realm? 
gross matter also is the visible realm understood to be the grossest realm in terms of physical qualities. So as I mentioned that that it could come from this propanchan could come from the five, meaning the five elements or the five and prancha could mean the five elements so like pra means foundational or or uh, primary perhaps one one use of the word. Um, but a bunch of could also be the five senses, the the experienced world, or the express world. So, Amelia, you're you're studying when the Vedantic text that uses this language. You were, can you describe a little bit? Oh, say, the um, how it's in used those, in the um, in the yeah in the what are you reading right now? Right, it's the it's the um, somewhere here on my desk amongst my many books. Um, it's those the one book, the outlines of um, Indian philosophy. Oh, okay. I oh, am okay. um, Haryana. Um, in, in it, he describes, because in the Upanishads, um, there's kind of the view, the cosmic view of Brahman and the, what he calls the acosmic view. And the word, he's using those English terminology. And in a certain sense, it's very much, very similar in a certain sense to this idea of uh, Vivartavad and Parinamavad. Mm -hmm. And so this term in the Upanishads, this terminology of the cosmic and acosmic conceptions, he uses saprapancha and nishprapancha. So nishprapancha is the more vivartavadic view, if you will, which is like God is separate from all this and all everything manifest is not that, with the capital T. Um, whereas the saprapancha view is as he translates as the cosmic view is the more inclusive one that one the uh, ekam has become everything and that's kind of very much more similar to the parinamavad and the more tantric view and so but he he uses the that terminology saprapancha and nishprapancha for mm -hmm. conceptions yeah yeah but in this sense, I think generally, and you'll find the word prapancha means like the world, like somebody who's like a, like oh, oh I'm 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 lost in thoughts of the world. That means I'm in prapancha. I'm just I'm like a worldly man. Is prapancha is the mind is 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 focused or obsessed or considering the things of you know the external things you know the the many, right? Is the mind's taking. The, the many to be so that's also something we use the word prapancha to be like worldly right that's also a thing that sometimes it's used that way here i think it means i mean obviously it's the, the she's evolved parinama into into the parapancha into the when she's evolved as when she evolves herself into the world she's known as the material cause right that that's i think a very nice use here mm -hmm. you, i guess i guess prapancha can kind of think of it like in like manifest manifold as you were saying earlier manifest manifold spread out or yes. and then the niche prabancha would be no it's it's not no, it's not <laughs> yes it is it's not <laughs> yeah thank you so much any other questions or comments oh, oh, oh. Andy. Oh, good. I was I was just about to call on you because you have some do this uh, because of Kashmir Shai and the like has a very advanced uh, Parinama view of this, right? It's a more a more direct a more direct view of the one becoming the many in a real in a very real way. Oh, you know, probably, yeah, yeah, <laughs> likely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did your did your um, permission come through for your travel? Oh, for, uh, uh, um. We're working on it. No, still working. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> We're still waiting. There's a helicopter, helicopter ticket to 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 crash into, not crash into the helicopter, but we need to <laughs> catch. We're yeah. trying to catch a helicopter. Yes. All right. <laughs> Durga, Durga. <laughs> I used the wrong word. <laughs> We're trying to catch a helicopter. <laughs> but anyway, it's complicated, but we're working on it. Thank you. The Maha Devi for that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. But but I was I was saying well thank you in Kashmir Shaivism 
they have a very technical description of how the one seems or actually becomes a many with shaktis and how you know that you know uh, and, yeah, and actually by, by uh, having next by having extra uh, tattvas also they have a, a sophisticated description of it that that i think vedanta and and, and sankhya can describe the experience of an individual but how we get the many in the first place i think Catholic Shaivism and their extra tattvas, I think, is the only way to, or not Catholic, the only way, but a very sophisticated, sophisticated way to describe yeah, this. Yeah, and the most sophisticated yeah. is using vat for the power, the the letters, the phonemes, yeah. and that gets yeah. very yeah. intricate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, good kid. Boom. Any other comments? We're actually done on time, kind of, today. Um, so everybody's scared to ask, then we won't we'll go, go, we'll, we'll go, we'll go off time. So we'll leave it, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your kind attention. And um, um, we'll, again, next week, God willing. Um, so uh, uh, um, you can keep in your mind your 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 prayers. You know, the Kali Mandir just celebrated its 30th anniversary celebration. We had a big public celebration. Um, and so actually the whole summer is our celebration. The whole year is our celebration for 30th oh. year. But this summer is a little period of time because last Amabasha was Falaharni Kali Puja, which is usually our annual function that we celebrate. Um, so we celebrated an elaborate puja that day. Um, uh, last Sunday or two Sundays ago, we did we had um um I guess last Sunday, I guess it was, or um yeah, uh, or two Sundays ago, sorry. My main still, uh, we had our all day celebration, a music music uh, celebration program. Um, next, Amavasha is the Titi by the by the astrological date, the lunar date of Ma 30th from the Prana Pratistana. And on the 19th of, of June is the solar date. That's what we put on the calendar as a birth date, right? If you can, if, if, if you can get, if the supreme, unchanging, unborn goddess can take birth. Her birthday was on the 19th of June, so keep keep us. So um, um, pray that Kali Mandir uh, uh, can continue. We can continue to that Ma can be here for generations to do good to the world, and that her devotees have uh, um, without too many obstacles <laughs> can serve her and serve the devotees. Okay, Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Good night, everyone. Yeah. And, and Swami, uh, just, uh, I'm going to be traveling the next two weeks, just so I you know. Okay, okay. Safe travel, Durga, Durga. Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Jai Ma, Durga Dasi. And Giriji. Jai Ma. <laughs> Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Uh -oh, and there's Kai. Hi. There's, there, there's Vijay. <laughs> Jema Sundari, Jema Jema, Alex Jema, Ananda Bai, uh, Om Namo Narayana, Namo Narayana, Namo Narayana, Namo Narayana, Om Tat Sat. Okay.